Hey, oh, it's OmniDog and a special Saturday edition of OmniDog's Vault on OmniBros Live because I can't get the internet to work on freaking OmniDog's Vault. So OmniDog's Omni Bros Live was nice enough to let me to pull my show over here and talk to my buddy Tyler Blunt. Tyler Blunt in the his house as the what up today. Of which we both clearly are. Oh, gosh. I'm <laughs> so young. We know all of the hip lingo. <laughs> I'm sure they say hip, right? All that lit. We get lit, fam. We get super lit. Super lit, fam. Yes. Um, sure. <laughs> um, but I don't understand. Lots of people's... Lots of people are having problems with Google Hangouts. My channel was having a massive problem with it. I was doing a promo for my new uh, scary movie review show, and I was having tons of problems with it. And I, you just told me that you saw on – Gio told me he saw it on Twitter that there were a lot of problems with it. You t saw that there were a lot of problems with it, but Omnibros doesn't have a problem with it. And so – I hijacked the Omni Bros for a special Saturday uh, extravaganza. We Tyler and I had a phone call the other day where we had a great talk about out of print books. And I said, hey, we should have a show about it on the weekend. And we both forgot what we were talking about. Yeah. And it was a 30 minute full length in depth discussion. But actually, now that I'm in front of my books, I do remember. We were talking about out of print books, and one of them was I don't think you. I brought up a point that you. I don't think you were aware of, and it was Wolverine. How many Wolverine books were actually out of print? And it's like all of them: Frank Miller, Chris Claremont, Big Thick Wolverines out of print, Mark Miller. Wolverine's out of print. Jason Aaron Wolverine's out of print, the first one. Wolverine and the X-Men is out of print, which leaves Wolverine uh goes to hell. I don't know that people consider Weapon X the return of the return of Weapon X. I don't know if they were really consider that that much of a Wolverine book, but Wolverine's been dead, what would we figure? Five years now? Yeah, which literally blew my mind because I felt like it had been about two years. But right. he's gone for five years, which is actually kind of impressive. And I mean, he's gone, but not gone. You know, there have been right. every other version of the actual Wolverine character, except for Wolverine. But the main Wolverine, gone for five years. Pretty ridiculous. Uh, that, I mean, ridiculous, you mean it's great because that meant that Laura X-23 has been true. able to come in and take his spot. Which that is book cool. was fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that kind of kicked off a conversation that we were having about what books we feel like should always be in print because there will always be a demand. I don't remember if that was exactly what we were talking about, but... Well, that's a good topic anyway. But Wolverine... A, some Wolverine book should always be in print, right? I, like, yeah. like what books should just be evergreen that are out of print that we would expect to see one all that should always be in print, but two, what do we think will come back in print? Like what, what out of print books do we think will definitely come back in print? I think you and I figured that the amazing Spider-Man will always be somehow in print, even though they leave them out of print for like a year. Yeah. And people get frothing at the mouth about it. They <laughs> they do always come back in print eventually. And it should be. Like we should have at least the first batch of Amazing Spider-Man omnibus in print. Or like maybe what do you think? The the Michelini era Spider-Man? What what Spider-Man would you say should always be in print? Um, I, uh, well, I think historically, uh, well now, now we're, we've finally gotten into my real era and that is this Spider-Man four. That is where okay. I, that is where I am, uh, the most invested. That's where as a teenager, I collect, that's where I got into the Punisher, where I, uh, was into the Gwen Stacy and the Green Goblin thing. And I was, that's where I actively 
collected Spider-Man and was into him as a teenager. Yes, I had uh, had because I sold it for real money. Mm. I had the original Punisher issue. Oh, 129. was that one twenty nine? Yeah. yeah, I had the oh. Gwen Stacy death. I had the Green Goblin death. Yeah, one twenty one, one twenty two. Oh, come on. And believe it or not, they were in really good shape. No. They were in they were in like nine two or better. Oh, you're, you're <laughs> oh, why would you do this to me? Why? <laughs> That's just horrible. I know. Golly. And I discovered them. Well, I discovered them uh, back when I first got married. They were, of course, in bags and boards that I had done when I was fifteen or something. And I discovered them, and I said, "Hey, wow, this Punisher guy! I think I saw." his comic at a convention recently for like 75 bucks. That's really cool. And oh, here's the Gwen Stacy issue. That's probably cool. And fast forward to two years ago and I pulled them out and I said, oh, I'm selling these. <laughs> at least you held them a reasonable amount of time. I thought you were going to tell me you sold them like 20 years ago. No, I, I, uh, I sold them. Um, let's see. What is this, 2019? I sold them in 2017. Mm. So Matt Miranda wants to know, speaking of Wolverine and issues you've sold, do you have Hulk 181, the first appearance of Wolverine? I did not collect it back then, but I do have it now. Um, That's all that matters. I do have it now, and it's in a safe deposit box. Yes. Unbelievable. I can't I believe you don't have it right behind you right now just to showcase at all moments. You know how expensive that thing is now? <laughs> how much is it up to? Tell me. Well. Take a guess. Oh, a guess? Yeah, like how much do you think it's up to? Let's play well, a high it. It depends, it depends on the grade. I mean, the grade varies wildly, but I mean, that is a, depending on the grade, that is a, uh, if you're let's start at 8.0 and if you're starting at 8.0 uh I, I don't know i i'm not good at this necessarily i mean you're talking minimum minimally of 8.0 up to like maybe 9.4 that's like a five to fifteen thousand dollar book Jeez, seriously yeah that's impressive i did not i mean i guess it makes sense wolverine's super popular uh always so you would think that his first appearance would be really up there you know he's he's always going to be in marvel except for that time they killed him for five years <laughs> which we're still recovering from we're still hurting on it we really are jess but i i wonder if they let those books go out of print because he just wasn't in the public eye for five years um yeah i mean uh, books still came out i mean jason aaron's books uh, uh, omnibuses still came out but considering i uh, this is just my personal opinion i think he's marvel's most popular character that's just my personal opinion opinion but i think it's weird that they let so many of his books go out of print mm -hmm. but uh, after speaking with omar about uh, and, and omar's connection to marvel now these guys don't know what's going on out there after books go out of print it they don't they don't follow the aftermarket they don't know about the aftermarket at all they don't know what's going on in ebay and amazon books just go out there they go out of print and that's it for these guys they don't really um and i'm not saying this in a, in a uh, casting aspersions bad way but they just they don't they don't keep track of what fans want once books go out of print yeah they're looking at okay what else can we put out there now and they don't look they don't once a book's out of print okay that's it now now they're looking at okay what else can we yeah. reprint although although i will say you know they reprint the the punisher and they reprint and now of course they're yeah. reprinting annihilation so they do pay attention to some they reprinted age of apocalypse which for a long time was yeah a huge huge whale for a lot of people so i i, I yeah i guess i kind of retract that they do pay attention to um that but they 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 really should redo that wolverine frank miller 
Chris. Gordon yeah. Marvel. So I think what we're trying to do is just help them out. Right. We're trying to help you out, Marvel. We want to tell you what books you guys need to bring back. Like this show is really for Marvel. It's not for us. We're just not for the fans. It's for Matt, Marvel. Matt Miranda is saying that a 9.6 of 181 sold for 13,000 on eBay yesterday. That's absurd. Almost as absurd as uh, Ugly McGregor saying that uh, he really enjoys your shirt, Jess. That shirt has got my man parts tingling, Jess. You know who Ugly McGregor <laughs> is. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Do, do you even get uh, Rugrats in the UK, Ugly? Or are you just giving me grief? <laughs> he loves to give me grief, that guy. I love that guy. Oh, so great. So Wolverine by Miller, definitely the Wolverine book to keep in print. Out of all Wolverine books. I would say yes. That's, that's an evergreen that book. You, just, you gotta keep in print, absolutely. Uh, based based on the popularity of that Michelinie book and and how, tra um, how transformative McFarland's art was yep. and how cool those stories were. I mean, that's that got me back into collecting spider-man those stories and that art i would say that's an evergreen book too it's gotta be as far as spider-man goes totally agree i love the stan lee stuff but i don't know that there's as high of a demand for any of really the silver age stuff which is something we talked about in our conversation like do you really see even with some of these reprints coming like thor volume like x-men volume one do you see these getting reprinted i don't um, really know that i do um kyler stern uh oop is out of print books books that are out of Ooh. print um you know that's a good question historically x-men won the omnibus should be in print um historically um but everybody that reads it including myself says it's really not very good <laughs> it's, it's honestly not it's really not that good and thor i told you on the phone the other day thor number one omnibus i sold on ebay yeah it's virtually unreadable <laughs> I, it is virtually unreadable uh, it is just not it it's it's not good it's it it's just i that does not need to be evergreen i don't see how that you know, we've already had three Thor movies and he's been in yeah. all the Avengers movies. I don't see that getting reprinted. I don't see I, any I demand for that except for maybe completionists. And I um, I don't know that Thor 2 is any better um, as far as um, some of that stuff. And, and God bless Stan Lee. I mean, everybody loves Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby... Sure. He deserves every accolade possible. I and I, this is not about Jack Kirby. This is about Stan Lee's writing. Some of that stuff was really plodding for the Silver Age. So it's going to be hard for me to say it needs to be kept evergreen. Amazing Spider-Man. That I thought that some of that writing compared to some of the other stuff, Fantastic Four and Amazing Spider-Man. I think that can be kept evergreen because that was reasonably easy mm -hmm. to read. Now, another book we talked about that totally holds up is Silver Surfer. And that's one that yeah. is out of print. The Silver yeah. Age yeah, Silver yeah, yeah, Surfer yeah, 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 is yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. The art is stellar. The writing is actually really good and totally holds up. Yeah. One of the best Silver Age books that I've ever read, honestly. Love it. And I think that that should be... And maybe, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, some of these reprints happen. Some of them seem like totally random. And then some of them seem to coincide with movie releases. So perhaps once the FF get back into the MCU, like yeah. absolutely they're going to do Galactus and Silver Surfer. There's no question about it. It's only a matter of time. Maybe we'll get a reprint then. Who knows? Yeah, I agree with Silver Surfer. That book is great. That is uh, an easy, easy to read, fun to read, excellent job by Stanley on that one. And, and uh, keep letting us know in chat what books you guys would want to see reprinted and what you think would be reprinted. Uh, Lewis said that the selling of his sealed Daredevil Bendis has been really interesting, and he's going to make a post on it um, about perceived value. Oh, that'll be good. Which I think is really interesting because a lot of these books that sell, 
are are selling because of hype. People haven't read. Oh, it. Yeah. So like people are buying, say, Anni Annihilation. Someone goes and buys Annihilation when it's out of print. They've a lot of times haven't read it. They're just buying it because maybe it's a good deal uh, or they want to have a complete collection or they want to have something of value. But like for me, when I got Annihilation, I was super underwhelmed by the story. Like it was so okay. Was it was okay. <laughs> Definitely not worth the, the hype that surrounded it. Spoiler wow. alert for anyone who's excited about that book coming out. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I only paid 60 or $90 for it, whatever I did. It was very underwhelming to me. And then I'm rushing to finish uh, Road to War of Kings, mm. which I'm really enjoying. Annihilation Conquest, I liked a lot better than Annihilation, but Road to War of Kings, I'm really enjoying. Um, we're getting off topic, but mm -hmm. um, other evergreen things. I think Frank Daredevil's Frank Daredevil. Frank, what if that was his name? Frank Daredevil. Frank da Frank Daredevil's <laughs> Miller book. Um, Frank Miller's Daredevil should be uh, evergreen. Always. That is, his, I mean, still the quintessential Daredevil story. Yeah. And, I mean, very well held up. Going back to X-Men, certainly some of the Jim Lee X-Men. I agree. Which, which some of the, uh, the writing is not the, tip top best it's super 90s in some parts but just given like you talked about the mcfarlane spider-man like absolutely gotta have it in print at all oh our buddy mike noah is in the chat dude mike how, he has got a wife that has a birthday today happy oh. birthday to amber happy birthday mike noah one of the greatest guys ever to walk planet earth and I'm not even kidding. That's an understatement. That is an understatement. He is the greatest guy. Absolutely. Um, we're getting some good suggestions in chat here. Uh, I like uh, the Astonishing X-Men. I would agree with, you know, when you look at X-Men books, Astonishing, you really talk about the big parts of X-Men. The Silver Age, we already talked about. The early 90s era always gets talked about. Well, the Claremont run in general. Yeah. But that's those books, those books have come back in print. And I don't know if those are going to go out of print anytime soon. They're not out of print now, are they? What ones? The Claremont one, two, and three. They are. They are out of print? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uncanny X Men? Uncanny one, two, and three are out of print. And so wow. are the Jim Lee one, twos. I knew Jim Lee was. I didn't realize. Okay. So you, I would say you got to have some of that uncanny. Claremont stuff in print, and then I agree. and then New X Men. Absolutely, gotta, you know why? You know why? Different. New X Men, Astonishing X Men, and mm -hmm. Uncanny X Force. The three big modern X Men books, right? Yeah, there. because you can jump into those and without any prior knowledge, or just just by knowing who the characters are, you can actually read those books and not have to have a lot of backstory. Yeah, which is pretty impressive for an X. <laughs> book. Those might be the only three X Men books you can read. Yeah, having to have those are three of my introductory X Men <laughs> books. The first three I read, and I was like, "Wow, X Men! They're really cool. These are great stories." And I didn't have any background in X Men, and I just jumped into those three in that order: New X Men, Astonishing, and then Uncanny X Force. And I was just like, "These are great stories. These were really fun." And I think those should be evergreen simply because that's where a new to Marvel reader should go to start. Absolutely. That's a good point in terms of evergreen. Like it should be super top quality and it should be new reader accessible. Those are, those are the two real big qualifications. I feel like, um, cause a lot of people pick up these books with Marvel being as big as it is now in film and television, a lot of people, and DC is the same way. People pick up these books based off of what they see in, on the silver yeah. screen or the big screen, and they just want to know more about the characters. So somebody who's seen the first X-Men movie may go pick up X-Men. If they pick up X-Men Revolution, <laughs> you're going to be disappointed, my friend. I'm so sorry. Uh, Babylon Shadows, yes, I will be doing essential books for Image and Dark Horse. Happily, I will be doing that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I will be doing that in the next couple of weeks. Jeffrey Roberts, Annihilation Conquest, according to 
Sir Jess Bragg Esquire is better than Annihilation. In okay. my in my personal opinion. That Which is the fact. Go on. <laughs> it's science. Continue. <laughs> it's my personal opinion that Conquest is a better read than Annihilation. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it is. So Fantastic Four. That's that's gotta be the biggest whale now, right? Is it Hickman Volume Hickman's one? Volume One? I yeah, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it to a newcomer. No, not at all. It is fantastic. It, but, yeah, it's great. You're all. right. I've read Volume One, not Volume Two, but um, I I gotta say, if ever there was a book at if if the Annihilation reprints, which I do believe are going to happen, do indeed happen, if ever there was a book that I would put money on being reprinted at some point, it would be Hickman volume one and volume two, probably eventually. So you do do with that information, what you will friends do with that information, what you will, but yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I, given how popular the run was, I, I think that the burn fantastic four should be evergreen too. Those are just now going out of print. Yeah, they held on for a while. They were they were on eBay for cheap for a yeah, while. Yeah, they were. So they're um but um Fantastic Four and Oh, uh, I know you're gonna say the Shang-Chi. The Shang-Chi <laughs> all four should be absolutely in print. <laughs> Shang-Chi. <laughs> <laughs> like it is a it, it was a true act of love for Marvel to actually make those books because they didn't have high quality scans of them already. So they actually had to go in and rescan all the work and clean it up to produce those books. But dude, they are just not good. <laughs> I mean, they're I, an interesting period piece. Yeah. And I loved them because they that. were from, yeah, they were from my childhood. So yeah, I loved them. I've got them. I've got all of them and I've read through about half of them. Oh, but, that's good. But if I read, I, I mean that very loosely, read through them as I flipped through them, looked at the pictures and got a general idea on the plot. But uh, I don't think anyone will ever miss them <laughs> if they go out of print. No one's going to be clamoring for that. No, you're not going to see Silver Surfer by slot type panic on that. No, if Omar tells them to reprint Shang-Chi, that will be the last time they ever listen <laughs> To his suggestions, they will take a bloodbath. <laughs> I don't think Omar's gonna do that. Let's hope not. No, I'll. T uh, you know who else I told you? Uh, considering how popular he is and who has a lot of out of print omnises, is Deadpool. Now, what Deadpool? I was looking at my omnibus shelf over there. Sorry, what Deadpool is out of print? Deadpool and Cable. Oh, that's right, and that's a fantastic book. Yeah, I mean, if you Dead like Deadpool, that is a great book. Deadpool by Joe Kelly. I um, forgot that was out of print. Deadpool. Uh, I can't see. Let me get up a little closer here. Uh, Deadpool classics, I think. And I mean, there's a lot of Deadpool omnibus. There are. There's Deadpool and Company, but Deadpool by Joe Kelly. And Deadpool Classics and Deadpool and Cable, I think. I don't think Deadpool Beginnings is out of print. Is the Minibus 1 out of print? I don't think so. I think all the Minibuses are in print. Minibus 1 was out of print for a while, but then they reprinted it. You know, they. Uh, I, I think I've had this conversation with you before, but I really have felt strongly that from like – 2000 to 2010 Wolverine was kind of the character. They were just like, Hey, everyone loves Wolverine. Let's throw him in everything. And Deadpool has become that character in the last decade. And we certainly see some evidence of that after there's, I mean, probably what 10 Deadpool omnibus total when you include the minibus. I mean, there's a lot of Deadpool in print and a lot of Deadpool oversaturation. I know I got a lot of friends who liked the character to begin with and are, are kind of oversaturated with them now and, and they're over them. So it'll be interesting to see moving forward with Marvel, what character ends up being that guy that they're like, he's popular. Let's put him on every team and in every book and it'll be great. Uh, it'll be interesting to see.
Let me know in chat who you think that will be. Uh, and I think we decided there were the one, do you remember the one book we said will not get a reprint? I don't, spoil it for me. <laughs> Captain Britain. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's That's gonna be a hard sell. I'm surprised that even got an omnibus and I just I do not see that getting a and then, reprint. And then Theresa May resigned and it's like, who knows what's going to happen? Theresa May. <laughs> what a poll. I know things. I know things. You do. Okay. You're tapped into things. I got a pulse heartbeat on things. Oh, <laughs> I know another book that will get reprinted, I believe. Okay. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I honestly thought it would already be reprinted. Iron Fist, the immortal Iron Fist. Oh, you know, I was just looking at that. That's That was another early recommendation from Third Eye Comics that I read, that I that I should read. And yeah, that is a great book. It's the best Iron Fist story, I think, that's out there. I haven't read all that much, but at least it's been the, my favorite thing I've read of the character. And so I'd be interested. I don't know. I kind of feel like that one's on the fence. You know, I, when the show came out, I thought for certain we were going to get a reprint. I couldn't believe that we didn't. And I don't know. It kind of depends on what happens with the character, maybe. Unless... Uh, All they had to do was take that story and make it the TV show, and that TV show would have been extremely popular. I don't understand why they didn't. That's all I wanted. Yeah. Literally all I wanted. And it seemed like maybe season three was going to set up the first half of that. I don't know if you... Did you watch season two? I didn't watch any of it, no. Okay, so the very end stinger for season two left you pretty certain they were going to incorporate some things from that run, which is why I was really sad that it got canceled. Mm. Um, Ecstatic we got in the, uh, in the chat is an amazing book. Someone said, don't know that that one is going to be reprinted if it's out of print. Is it out of print? I don't know. Um, I think that we would see, we will see in the future soon, Brubaker Cap reprints, I bet. Yeah, I, I thought for certain we would have a death of Cap when Civil War came out. Yeah. And every movie since then, I've been holding my breath. Oh, and I did say I was going to tell you I learned some inside information on epics. Oh, really? Do because we were, we were saying how epics should be evergreen. Yes. But... It turns out that it's just as expensive to print an epic as it is one of those Marvel masterworks that makes so much more money really? for them. They're almost exactly the same wow. price, and they make a ton more dough on Marvel masterworks. So oh. I think the thinking is, if we're going to reprint anything, it's going to be a Marvel masterwork. <laughs> And I just, I know there are people out there who love the Marvel Masterworks. It's just not me. Uh, it's probably people in my age range, but it's not yeah. me either. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I am committed to getting the Jack Kirby Captain America in uh, Marvel Masterworks form because I stupidly sold the Omnibus. So I will be getting that in Marvel Masterworks form, and that's it. That's super interesting to me. And I mean, of course... At the end of the day, Marvel's a business, and they're they're going to do what's most profitable to them, uh, and so, I mean, largely in part. And so, I feel like if they get a good, like you know, a good feel on what the community wants for reprints, then they can they can feel confident in doing another run and and actually making some more money. I don't know. I, I've told you this before, and I'm sure there's a reason for it. And it may just be that it's more hassle than Marvel wants to do. But it sure would be nice if they had a way where they could just say, like, hey, who's interested in this book? And if you commit to pre-ordering, kind of like you do a Kickstarter, mm. you get charged if they reach the number that they need to, to, to reprint a book. And if not enough people sign up for that reprint of the book, then you just don't get charged and it's it's fine. That way they could guarantee a minimum order. They could print more and sell them to shops if they wanted to, but you could guarantee a minimum order. I don't know. I wish I wish they would do that as a way to guarantee they make money and we get the, the reprints that we want. Happy Memorial Day to Mike Noah, who is leaving the chat. Mike Noah, greatest person ever. Absolutely. Happy Memorial Day. 
And um, but that blows my mind. I mean, epics are on. I mean, uh, Marvel Masterworks are on nice paper. Absolutely. And epics are not. And I that just blows my mind that that it's, equation. Is I guess made. it's the thickness of the epic <sighs> equates God. to the quality of the masterwork. Would be my guess. My information wasn't that deep. Yeah, that's interesting. So Austin Caldwell mentions a Ghost Rider by Aaron reprint since there's a Hulu show coming out. Oh, that'd be Which nice. I'm very excited about the show, by the way. Me too. That would be great. I, that's one of the few Marvel omnibus that I don't have that I still want. And I passed on it a couple times at like 75 bucks and, and I've regretted <clears> it. I don't know. Feels bad. Feels bad. I'm sure it does. Mm. Um. I feel like, well, I, I think DC is more of a case of what they need to put into omnibus <laughs> format rather than what they need to keep evergreen. I'll tell you what they don't need to keep evergreen anymore is the death and return of Superman. We get it. He died. He returned. He's Superman. At okay. this point, if you don't have that book and it's gone, that's your fault. Yeah. Like that's on anyone who's watching now who doesn't start collecting after this point. If you don't have the death and return of Superman and you decide you want it later, that's on you, bro. Hate to hate to tell you, but that's on you. It's been in and out of print like a bajillion times. Yeah. And there's my buddy Ethan, who I was on his podcast the other night. He's, uh, I am very impressed with Ethan's breadth of knowledge at 19 years old. He awesome. is a extremely knowledgeable young man. Um. But yeah, it's D, it's more what DC needs to put into Omni form or even just hardcover form or even just reprint. Um, yeah, I mean, good night. I mean, of course, there's some DC books that are obvious, like Green Lantern by Johns. Yeah, they like, should be kept in print. Wade, Flash. Yeah. I'd like to see those come back in print because I thought those were great. Um, there's a few DC books that should just always be in print. And, you know, we were talking about this the uh, with the case of Superman, for example. There's not a whole lot of just stellar Superman runs that take place in, say, Action Comics 600 to 625. Right. It's For, for what I've enjoyed, at least, of the character, and I think what most people enjoy are a lot of the one-off stories or the mm -hmm. graphic novels or the limited issue series. And those deluxe should always be kept in print. And there's quite a few of those with the character specifically with Superman and Batman. But I feel like there's a few probably in there we could find for wonder woman and flash and maybe some of the other characters. Yeah. I did a, a recently did a um, guide to uh, starting your uh, collected editions collection for DC. And I really didn't have, um, and it's supposed to be new reader friendly. So I couldn't exactly give them, um, you know, Batman Incorporated by Grant Morrison or or Batman and Robin by Tomasi necessarily because that requires so much back right. knowledge for the character. But the, I was really surprised at how little there was big, thick, collected stuff besides the Golden Age stuff that had come out for Batman and Superman. Um, I guess at some point in time we'll have I hope we'll have Silver Age and Bronze Age, the Bronze Age stuff I'm really looking forward to for Batman and Superman. That's uh, really where we needed to be headed. Um, but what I ended up uh, recommending was, as you say, a bunch of individual trades and hardcover things like uh, Secret Identity for Superman, uh, Birthright for Superman, um, uh, I recommended Snyder's run on Batman um, and Tom King's run on Batman and uh, Rucka's two books on Wonder Woman. I meant to include Azarello's run on Wonder Woman and for some reason I didn't, but I meant to. Um, but it seems like it's single. It's more like... Um, uh, as you say, it, it's not huge chunks of of stuff for Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. It's more, it's more like individual books that they've issued, like Red Sun for uh, Superman and things like that. 
it's interesting. It's an interesting strategy uh, that, or I don't know if it's necessarily was their strategy, but it's just kind of an interesting evolution of the enjoyment of the DC Comics line, I feel like, from a lot of people. It is strange to me, though, they've always had the most bizarre printing pattern. Like, I would love for Omar or anybody to be able to pick the pick the brain of the guy who makes the prints, cancellations, reprints decisions at DC for some of these collected books. Cause it's like, mm. I, it just, it legitimately seems to have no rhyme or reason. No, it's drunk monkeys throwing <laughs> darts at a dartboard. <laughs> There's no like, Oh, we're going to do volume one, two, and three of this, or we're going to start here. Or people seem interested in this. It's like, let's just toss it out there, see what happens and hope a lot of people buy it. Oh, it, no. It, the it's perfect it's example is justice league by Jeff Johns, which <laughs> I, I loved, not everybody is with me on this, but I don't care. It's, I, this oh, is I'm my, with you. It's great. I loved all of it. So I want to collect all of it in the same format. So mm -hmm. you got the first chunk is in an absolute, then standard, and then it ends it's up in an omnibus. Know, like what, what is that? I mean, that's just not, that's not how, that's not what a that's not what a fan wants. Yes, that's that's it. That's exactly it. That's not what a fan wants. A fan in in our collecting community wants some consistency. Um, we we'd want three omnis of that. Boom, perfect, sold. We'll all get it. It's you want to do four absolutes of it? That's a lot of money, but okay, we'll do it. J yeah. Jim Lee's art and everybody else's art, and that was awesome. So um, it, it's just it just boggles my mind. I think omnibus format for that series would have been great. It's bizarre the decision making, and it makes it hard. I feel like I feel like they've got a guy in an office who just looks at the numbers and he goes, "Okay, well these books aren't selling. Like, okay, here's our omnibus line. Here's the sales. Here's the cost. Wow, we're not making much money. Let's just cancel stuff." But whoever's making that decision doesn't understand what the people who are trying to purchase their product really want. Like you said, like if you release an absolute, a trade and an omnibus, and it's all you got to do to get the same run, people are going to buy that. People want everything in one collected edition and they want consistency and they want to know like, this is next up that I'm going to order. And if they did that, then I think people would buy their stuff and they would probably see an uptick in sales. Absolutely. And so it's frustrating because they probably, I don't know this for sure, but they probably look at the fans and they're like, well, they're just not supporting the line. But the reality is we're not supporting the line as much because they're making idiot, idiotic decisions. I, I just don't think they are um, tapped into what fans want of collected editions. They may know what fans want in floppies. Sure. But they don't know what fans want in collected Which editions. Which are a hundred variants of Action Comics 1000. <laughs> I, they, they know we want them all. We want them all. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. It would be really, it would be nice to be able to just sit down with one of those guys and do an interview or talk to them off the record for 20 minutes. And just be like, explain to me what, why you do what you do. And let me explain to you from a fan perspective what we want and what we're willing to spend money on. Well, and I can promise you this. Um, Snyder Omnibus for American Vampire, Snyder Omnibus for Batman, and Absolute for Swamp Thing. I ain't buying those until they are absolutely complete. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not getting stuck with uh, <laughs> half completed runs. I am absolutely not uh, getting stuck with half completed and runs. And you know Marvel's Marvel has done that, but DC you like Marvel you don't generally expect it to happen. It's happened with what? I don't know. What's New it happened? New Avengers had one volume. Oh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man had one yeah. volume. Yeah. Those are the only two I can really think of that only had one volume off the top of my head that they've not planned at some point to do another volume of that, that say volume one. They're not just like, okay, here's a story like the immortal iron fist. Well, it's not immortal iron fist volume one. It's just immortal iron fist. So you never expected a, a follow-up. Yeah. DC on the other hand announces like 80 books and then people get excited about it and they cancel 75 of them. 
And you're like, I don't understand. Where's my hush omnibus? Where's my hush omnibus? <laughs> <laughs> I just want hush. Is that too much to ask? Yeah. Um, but but no, we've seen way too many times not supporting the entire line in the format that they start out with. DC. And, yeah. and and that is just not a good way to do business. So I'm not I'm not even going to come close to purchasing those books um, until they are absolutely all out. I think it's wise. I think it's just a it's a smart decision. You got to do that. Uh, Corey Wilson, the Clone Saga, did have a, a second book. It had volume one and two, and turned out to be the best story Marvel's ever written. If you haven't read it, you can take it to the bank. I'm just kidding. It's not that great. Um, Ethan, you need to get a, a Billy uh, from Ikea. They have adjustable shelves. That's what I do with my absolutes. My omnibuses go in a Kalax from Ikea. So we're getting Bendis reprints of Daredevil. Correct. Do you think that we're going to get Brubaker? We got Brubaker volume. Got Brubaker. Did we get volume one and two? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember if those came in. So I feel like Brubaker should always stay in print. But unfortunately, I feel like you have to have Bendis to follow up with Brubaker. I, I agree with that. They Those need to be read together. So if you're going to keep all those in print as Evergreen, you got to keep them all in print. You I can't agree with that. Bendis and... I mean, you could do Bendis without Brubaker. That would just be a shame. You couldn't do Brubaker without Bendis. That, that's the sad truth of it all. Um, I No, I totally agree. One follows the other. Uh, um, I I think we'll get a Miles Morales reprint of, oh, of the Omnibus because it's out of print. Oh, it is? Okay. And I think we'll get a reprint of that following the next Spider-Verse movie. Or potentially with his introduction into the MCU, which I foresee happening very shortly. I am going to get my wife to see Into the Spider Verse. She, oh, it's I, amazing! I already got our tickets for uh, Away from Home or whatever it is, far, far away from home or whatever it's called. Uh, I already got our tickets for that, and yeah, she loves Spider Man movies. Oh, she's got to see Spider Verse is the best animated film of all time. It's so good. I told. I'm not going to argue with you. I love it, <laughs> <laughs> and I think she would dig it. I I really want her to see it. Speaking of uh, debating, Corey Wilson, you will not debate me that the Clone Saga is amazing because it won't be a debate. We'll just be agreeing the whole time because I actually really like those books. I just recognize that a lot of people do not like those books, but I loved them. I, I grew up with that Spider Man. I really enjoyed the Clone Saga, even in all of its convoluted and drawn out mess the what was supposed to happen in like 12 issues happened in like four years yeah i, I still loved every second of it and i've got all the omnibus so it wouldn't be a debate we would just be sitting around going this book is great well i think this book is great well i think it's great too hey is that that poster jenny got for you on yeah, my recommendation it is thanks thanks buddy i'll lean back a little bit so you can see it actually the moon is a glow in the dark uh, Miles Morales spider symbol. So if I turn off all the lights, it glows, which is pretty awesome. It's I love the poster and I love the film. There you go. Now and you the just vinyl. need the soundtrack and the vinyl. It's next on my list. Got to get the vinyl. It. Yeah, got to be done. So what are some? Okay, so here's a here's a good question because you're m much more of an expert. Uh oh. On non-Marvel and DC, because you know I'm primarily a Marvel and DC guy, despite your best efforts. <laughs> <laughs> what books do you think that are out of print should be reprinted and or should be evergreen that are from a, a third, third party, independent public? Ah, I do have a couple of those that have been brought to my it's been brought to my attention that the black hammer library edition is getting close to being sold out mm. i think black hammer should always be in print that is a fantastic book and it has now come to my attention that 
uh, Brubaker's Criminal, the first <clears throat> volume, the first deluxe of Criminal is now uh, uh, lightly out of print. It just went out of print. Okay. That should always be in print. The Criminal Books, Incognito, Scene of the Crime, the, oh, uh, uh, Fatal Volume 1 is out of print. That should, uh, I don't, well, I, I think all Brubaker should always be yeah, in print. Yeah, his because stuff is great. His stuff is so great. Now, Fatal is, is, is much different than his criminal stuff, but it's still wonderful. I think all of his stuff should always be in print, but uh, but that's up to him. Fatal was an image thing. Um, Criminal's an icon book, and I was icon a Marvel imprint? I don't even know. I, I don't know where that stands. I have no idea. Uh, Planetary, maybe, somebody mentioned. Totally agree. Planetary. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Might be my favorite, like, comic of all time. Absolutely, people should. They should keep that in print. I'm going to turn the lights off and see if the poster will glow. I don't know if I can oh, get that's it. that's cool. Uh, a Week in Geekdom, if you guys haven't subbed to that channel, what are you doing? Go sub. <laughs> Recommended it. So we're going to see what happens. He's just going to walk out. Is it viewable? Uh, it's getting some reflection from stuff. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are we supposed to be seeing? Let's see. It's like in here. Oh, I see your cute dog. Yeah, I don't think it's happening. It was a good try. I, it's fun to see your doggy, though. She's cute. Yeah, thanks. She just ate a crayon. It's really special. We're all real happy about it. Oh, okay. That's going to be a fun treat later. That's all right. All things must pass. <clears throat> that was a lot of energy. <laughs> just to go, try to get that to light up. Don't just try until we can geek them, guys. You know you want to. Um. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Corey Wilson brought a fear agent. That's a book that deserves to stay in print. Um, that's a good one. Um, I don't, in some form or another, all the Hellboy books need to stay in print. I was happy to see that Baltimore was getting a omnibus because those books are good and they were getting pricey. Some of those skinny little Baltimore books were getting really pricey. Uh, BPRD, if you can't get it in hardcover, at least you can get it in trade paperback. Same with Usagi. You can get in trade paperback. Yeah, you can get it in trade paperback. So um, I got one, though, that absolutely has to be reprinted. You ready for it? It's going to blow your mind. Uh, the Art of Harley Quinn. How did you know? That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Well, you read my mind. <laughs> no. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. Book of the year last year. Was that your book of the year? Uh, yeah, it probably was. Yeah, I loved it. Well, you know, that's the story Gabe told about these, you know, smaller publishers. They're even more clueless about the aftermarket than Marvel and DC. He, you oh, know, he, he, so he took up, he, he saw the guy from Boom at the retailer conference and he went up to him and he showed uh, <laughs> the guy what uh, Irredeemable 4 was going for on the yeah. aftermarket. And the guy was like, what? That's crazy, and he's like, "Yeah, you need to reprint uh, Irredeemable Four, so P and Five, so people can finish the run." To which and he said, "I will work on it." 
So I think what we need to do is flood the guy's Twitter feed with absolutely pictures of eBay's sales figures and say, dude, reprint this. Absolutely. Is IDW TMNT out of print, Freddie? I did not realize that. This is shocking to me. Yeah, it needs to be reprinted if it is out of print in some form. Yeah, I think that kind of covers all the major books that we feel like should be in print. Um, were there any characters specifically that we left out or any any books that new readers need to read? Well, um, I personally, I would love to see Madman, Atomica, and Gargantua reprinted. Okay. I, I don't... Um, I don't know what the sales figures were like on those. Those are great collections, but Madman's a niche character with niche artwork. So he may have only done like 500 of each as far as I know. I don't even know what he did about them. Um, so, you know, Madman's, uh, uh, Mike Allred's not, art is not for everybody. Um, uh, 100 Bullets, they need to reprint two and four of that in deluxe hardcover. That's been out of print since I have practically started collecting collected editions. Those are two of the first Ooh. things I nabbed. Um, but um, otherwise, I think that DC does a good job of keeping things in print, but they, they need to, they need to up their collected edition game. I think we agree on that. Absolutely. And I think that, um, I, I think it's going to be, um, I don't, I, well, I'm good friends with Omar and I don't want to oversell it, but I think that you're going to see what I, what I wish I could do for DC as a fan, you're going to see Omar do for Marvel as a fan. Cause he's in a, he's really got their ear uh, as to what needs to be happening from a fan's perspective. That would be amazing. Hey, quick side note. Yes. I don't think it's bouncing back to you. I think it's staying on me. Oh, 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 you're right. Which is I fine. You just did yeah. a lot of my reactions to your wonderful commentary. <laughs> I did that I when you were like doing that. the poster. Um, um, I, yeah. I, he's in, in, I don't want to oversell it because it's not my place. It's his business. But I mean, it's, it's kind of the dream job in an unofficial uh, capacity, um, especially for somebody like Omar, who has so much Marvel knowledge. You know, he, he has uh, such retention um, of Marvel stuff and, and he knows what people want. He's a true fan. So he knows what people want. And yeah, I could, if only I could do that for DC, I could turn <laughs> that collected editions department around in two seconds. Oh man. So, okay. Here's what I want to know from chat. I want to know whether you're watching now. No, you should not troll Omar, Freddie. Leave him alone. I'm just saying he's a great guy and he's going to change things around for us for the better. Don't you dare troll him. I want to know what one omnibus, if you could have any omnibus that's out of print or any book period that's out of print, reprinted, just one. So if you're watching this later, if you're riding down the road, listening to a podcast, you shout it out loud. If you're in the chat, drop it. One omnibus back in print and every like that this video gets is one wish for an omnibus reprint come true <laughs> and every comment will get you 9.3 ssd points there you go one Ooh, time deal only super squad d points one time only because that's what i want to know uh but in all seriousness, if I could have one book reprinted, yeah, what would it be? Any one book, it would be extremely lackluster because it would be super selfish, and that would just be Ghost Ghost Rider by Jason Aaron, which is not even like that mega of a whale for a lot of people. Oh, that's that's, a, a, book, that's a pretty good. That's a rare. That's a rare book. That's the book that I would want to come back in because I don't. Uh, I don't have it. What about you? 
One book. Uh, I've already had everything. And if I've had it and didn't want it, I sold it. And if you wanted it and didn't have it, you got it. Yeah. So there's nothing I really want. Um, let me think. Well, then do the world a favor and say Usagi Volume 1, <laughs> which is a limited edition print, so they'll never reprint it. Um, <laughs> God, I'll never forget finding that. That was such a stroke of luck. What a rush. <laughs> I know. I was looking. It must be because I was looking for an Usagi book for Bon Idol House. Mm. And, I, and I was just over in the Usagi section. And there was. There was. That was um, what, four years ago? Three years ago? That was four years ago. The Omnibus Group had just started. So it must have been 2015. Wow. Four years ago. And it was a small comic book store half an hour south of here. And I, I had bought a ton of books that were out of print. I had just found a, a whole bunch, including, um, including uh, Ultimate Spider-Man that I had found there. And I just wandered over to the U section, was up near the cash register, and there, in like a plastic sack, I was looking in the U section for Yuzagi, and in this plastic sack was this Yuzagi book, and. I looked at it and I said, hey, I think I've heard of this book. I I think this might be the really rare one. Wait, let me let me look at this for a minute. And I'm looking that, at it. It was still rare, right? Sorry? It was rare at the time even. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Four years ago. And I'm looking at it and I go, gosh, I'm pretty sure this is the rare one. And I took it up to the counter and the guy goes, Oh my God, that book's been here forever. I'll give you 20% off on it. Like, All right, sir. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. That's great. <laughs> that is how I got it. I that just lucked into it. Is that your greatest find in the wild? Oh, I would have to say so, yeah. The best find in the wild I ever had happened about two months ago. Oh? All the time I've been collecting, I went into a second in Charles with a friend in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, I think you told me this. And yeah. I walked back to the back. My friend doesn't collect comics at all. He like understands my love for it and reads some, but he doesn't collect. And I walked back to the back and I looked in the case and there with a $50 price tag on it was Annihilation Volume 1. No, that's right. And my heart dropped and I ran to find somebody and was like, I want this book right now. I need to buy it <laughs> right now. And I, I walked with them to get the book, walked with them back to the register. They were like, well, hold it for you while you look. I'm like, nope, I will buy it right now. And I will carry it around the store. And I did. And now it's getting reprinted. So you're welcome. <laughs> That's still an awesome find. It's not, get, it's not getting reprinted till the end of the year, beginning That's of next it. year. That's it. No complaints. That's for sure. No complaints. Well, I got a feeling everybody's wish is going to come true because if these books are getting reprinted, there's a whole lot of good, good books to be reprinted that could happen. If an I wish comes out, except for Captain Britain. That's right. Except for Captain Britain. If that's your hope, you better look for a deal on eBay because it sure ain't happening. I don't see it. I don't see it at all. I do see a book I'm going to give away, though. Really? To the library. Yeah, I, I don't want it. What is it? The Tell Greatest me. Flash Stories Ever Told. Mm. It's just one of those compilation books that I was given early in my comic career. I don't want that. I'm Do going, I am going, I am being brutal right now. I am just going through everything. I mean, I looked at those, I, I don't think they're going to sell those Black Panther books that I put up for sale mm -hmm. on the group. I don't think they're going to sell. I'm just going to donate those to the library. That's a good idea. Yeah. I think I'm going to donate about seven boxes to the library. I'm just, if I'm not going to, if I'm not interested in it, I am not keeping it. I am being brutal right now. I am just getting rid of stuff. Well, I too need to do that. I'm starting to do that with my action figures. It's that breaks my freaking heart. I know, man. I know. It's rough. 
it's hard to part with things you you enjoy. What are you gonna? How are you gonna get rid of them? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna yeah. donate them to a school or something? Or I'm gonna try to sell them on eBay, the ones I can, and the ones that won't sell, I'll just give away. And are are do you have the boxes for them still? No, uh, they're all loose. And will they sell loose? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a big market for loose figures. Absolutely, figures oh. are a lot like books. When they go out of print, if you got it sealed, it's more valuable. But if it's not sealed, it's not a problem. People want them because once they're out of print, just like a book. It's gone. Mm. So there's a big aftermarket for action figures. Um, and I got a lot of action figures. And then, <laughs> there, It's really just the overwhelming um, energy it will require to go through all of my figures and price them and sell them. Like I wish so badly I could find a, a shop somewhere who would come in and offer me like 60 cents on the dollar of what their value is and just take them all. I'd do it. Yeah, I agree with that. But I had a friend, you know, who had a comic book collection that he sold that way. Uh, it was either twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars. Whoa! Sold this collection for yeah, it was no, no, no joke of a collection. It's the best collection I've ever seen. In, wow! In person, he had every run of every issue of Spider-Man at the time, every issue of Daredevil, every issue of X-Men, and a lot of Fantastic Four. And every fir major Marvel first appearance in some way. Now, a lot of it was, you know, threes and fours. I mean, they weren't like stellar grades, but yeah, it was an amazing collection. I, I wanted the uh, the Amazing Spider-Man so bad, but I couldn't afford them at the time. I've got everything but the first 100 issues of Amazing Spider-Man. Wow. So that's, it was, that's, a, that's great. It was, uh, but it, and that's what happened. He had a guy come in, offered him. I think about 50 or 60 cents on the dollar for what they were worth and took them all. That's Back nice. Texas, it was a store in Texas. Yeah. It worked out great. Plastic empire in Georgia. I'm going to write that down, Corey. Yeah. They'll do it. I'd be super interested. Plastic empire. How far away is Georgia from you? Um, I mean, I could be in Atlanta in seven hours. So, but there's conventions and stuff in the area. Like yeah, maybe, that's true. maybe a guy's going to go to a convention that's, you know, three hours from me. I mean, it's it's not like I'd have to uh, I'd have to do anything tremendous. I mean, I'd ship them, but good lord, at the shipping cost, it's just gonna be so much. It'd be way cheaper to drive them if somebody came and picked them up. But we'll see. Don't threaten you with knives, Johnny Rando. This is not a knife. This is a master sword. <laughs> a master sword letter opener that I got for like ten bucks on ThinkGeek, and it was awesome. Uh, I told you that I um, that I had to have something done by uh, a guy after all those tests. Mm -hmm. So I was in there, um, and he was uh, he was doing the consultation, which hurt like hell. <laughs> and uh, he saw my, I had my uh, Marvel character shirt on, which has all oh, the little awesome. heads of the Marvel things on it. Yeah. And he said, oh, hey, uh, you uh, know anything about comic books? And I said, oh, a little. <laughs> he said, my son was given three boxes of bagged and boarded comics from the 80s and 90s, and we don't know anything about them. And do you, would you mind looking at them and telling us if they're worth anything? And I wanted to say. It depends on how much you're going to knock off on my bill. <laughs> Well, I wanted to say, are you going to give me an extra prescription for pain pills? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, then, uh, I, I said, mean, I, I could, you know, I said, uh, she, I said, sure. When I come back in after the operation, I will, uh, I will, when you check me up, I will, I will, um, I will be happy to look at them. So I'll, I'll I don't know that I'm going to find the first hundred issues of Spider-Man, but I think I will find, um, you know, maybe he has New Mutants 98 in there or something. That'd be awesome. You know, I had a friend who discovered they had Batman the Animated Series number 10. You mean 12? 12? Is it 12? 12. Yes. Yeah. No, they had 10. It was worthless. <laughs> 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 they found a U10. They are like, what is this? No, nothing. Yeah, they found they had the first appearance of Harley Quinn. So it's possible. Nice. Anything is possible. Yeah.
Well, and then I'll say, I, yeah, he'll probably have like four copies of Batman Adventures 12. And I'll just say, oh, man, nothing here. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Yeah, I got another kid who I know I'd really enjoy these more than your kid. Let me just take these off your hand. Oh, no, man. No, I, uh, in the 90, 80s and 90s, you'd be surprised. There could be something. Like, there could be like New Mutants 98. There could be something like. Yeah. Batman Adventures 12, there could be, you know, there there might be something. And if, if they're taken care of, um, you know, I, there, there might be something. I'm still hoping to find the Action Comics 1 wedged in between the dresser and the wall. Did you did you read that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think that's everybody's hope. Yeah. They're going to find that somewhere. Do you want to do a quick Q&A? where we just answer any questions, any and all questions. Sure. That's fine with me. I love rapid fire Q and A's. I don't know if the chat's up for it. It's going to require some uh, pretty fast typing. And uh, you know, they might already be too elated from all this uh, reprint talk. But yeah. If you have any talk. questions for us, chat, let us any know. Any questions about anything. Nothing is off limits and everything. And we have the answers to everything. I don't know if you know that. We actually have the answers to everything. We we do actually have the answers to everything because our wives are out of town <laughs> and there's nobody here to question us. So we have the answers to everything. Yeah, I hope you guys weren't thinking that there was anything else was gonna. This is this is a twelve hour stream. We, have, <laughs> we got nothing to do. We're gonna be here a long time. Like he's gonna leave for a while. I'm gonna leave for a while. But it's happening forever. If you could have any, all right, I'm going to do this. We'll go as fast as we can. First thing that comes into your mind, any series made into an Omni, what would it be? Uh, John Byrne, Man of Steel. Ninja Turtles, original. Why is Jess so much cooler than Tyler? That's hurtful. <laughs> That's hurtful. Pepperoni or pineapple pizza? Uh, pineapple on pizza is uh, an abomination, so I will say pepperoni. 100% agree. That's why we're Twinkies. Tobias Funke voice. There are dozens of us. Never nudes. It's never nudes. How are you? Jess, in your later age, what's your number one hope and dream? Uh, that I'm still alive. That's, that's a solid one. Top five wanted Omni that haven't been made yet. Uh, I'll give you one. Number one Marvel Omni that hasn't been made yet. Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 2. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I would say, you know what? It would be a good Omni House of M. Oh, yeah. How have they not made that? That's a good point. Call Omar. <laughs> Everybody, Twitter spam. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, top three runs of all time. Batman Hush. Top favorite runs of all time. Not, not best runs. Uh, uh, Dan Slot Spider-Man. Batman Hush. And, oh, gosh. Oh, there's so many choices. There's so many choices. Why would you uh, do this? Fraction Hawkeye. I don't know. Those are three runs I really like. I, I can't. I can't say they're even my favorite runs of all time, but I really mm -hmm. like. Them. Uh, well, the first one that comes to mind is Green Lantern, Green Arrow by Dennis O'Neill and um, Neil Adams. That's my number one choice. Um, the next one that comes to mind is. Oh gosh, I have like a top twelve, and I can never remember what's in it. Um, oh, I forgot Planetary, honorable mention. Oh, yeah, Planetary is my number two, and All Star Superman is my number oh, three. Oh, so good. Uh, when are you watching the Modern Apes movies, Jess? Whenever Louise sends them to me. Still going to be on when you have to do a Sunday show tomorrow? <laughs> you mean, is this show still going to be on? Oh. Or am I going to be on? Yeah, no, this show is still going to be going, it's just never going to stop. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be on how to trade books in the Facebook group. See the rules. Probably the easiest way to answer that question. Cause it would take too long not to I, be a, a Debbie down. I'm from Malaysia and looking to trade uncanny X-Force Omni with Spider-Man civil war. That's a great trade, but not That's sure cool. how you go on the Facebook group. Uh, the problem is you're going to have a problem with shipping. Yeah. That's going to cost you an arm and a leg to trade somebody in the United States, which is where the majority of people are. But just say want to trade Uncanny X-Force Omni for Spider-Man Civil War OHC. Uh, hit me up with, the, hit me up, uh, with offers. 
And it's it's just as simple as that. Just breaking it down real easy. That was nice. I liked it. No, well, thank you. No pineapple on pizza. Our friendship is in question. Uh oh, is, is that, that David Cod? Uh oh, is that a question? I don't know. Define beauty. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at it here. Fifty percent at least. You're looking at it on both screens, buddy. Hey all. Hey to you, Crazy Jane. How are you? How you doing? How you doing? My voice is gone, so I can't really do any voices. Hello, Holly here. See, I can't even do the Joker. Oh, he he. Tyler left me a message on my <laughs> voicemail that sounded so much like Mark Hamill as the Joker. I almost had to throw my phone away. It was pretty beautiful. It, it was, was amazing. Was like, I could I could give it a shot. Um, <laughs> and maybe a little uh, Robin. A little Batman. Uh, if you had the chance to cure world hunger or get spectacular Spider-Man cartoon finished, what would you pick and why is it spectacular spider <laughs> I mean, I think you pretty much just answered the question yourself. I don't know if there's more to say about that. Tony, did, did, did I miss your question? I asked the tough questions. What did he ask? I don't know. I missed it. I'm sorry. Tony Manton. Oh, Tony. He asked the top three runs of all time. Oh, that was a hard question. Can you see my house from there? I could see it if I was in Alaska. <laughs> that was a deep reference. Who gets it? I do. And I can see Russia. <laughs> do you think DC will continue with their omnibus age lines with the restructure of the collection department, Jess? Um, boy, I hope so because they were really on a roll and they were getting close to the silver age, which means they would be eventually doing within my lifetime, the bronze age. Uh, but I don't pretend to have any idea what DC's doing. So, uh, uncanny Durley, I don't know the answer to that. I just don't know. I'm going to just say no. Because I, <laughs> I have no faith in DC at this point. After they canceled Hush, they, they just really upset me. Who is the worst artist in comics and why is it Greg Horn? That's a weird way to spell Greg Land. Yeah, I, was, I know. I was expecting him to say Greg Land. Um, European comics episode when? Ooh, oh. that would be a fun episode. You know, uh, Omar and I are going to do a humanoids episode. We just haven't done it yet, but we are going to do a humanoids episode. I don't know that. I think he and I are probably the ones that have really read the most European and humanoids comics. And I, I'm not a hundred percent sure that the other guys have. So we would need to get, Oh, I, I know they haven't because Gio is the one that asked us to do it. Um, so I, we would have to get going on that. Can we get more Mango Bros? I don't think you're asking the right person, Dave. I'm being <laughs> honest with you. Don't ask me. Oh. I know that there's a huge uh, uh, support for that group. Tony, this is a great question. Tony asks, should I buy the JMS Spider-Man Omni? The answer is yes, but you should. when you get it in, you need to go to where it says Volume 1 and just color that all in. And just pretend like that's the only volume that JMS ever wrote, and you'll be a very happy person. Ignore anything after that from JMS. Have you been watching Chernobyl? No, I have this friend. His name is Ryan, and he's insane. And he says that it's really hard watch. So I, I just haven't been watching it. How about you, Jess? Uh, same. I hope they skip the Bronze Age. Are people finally willing to admit Westworld's better than Game of Thrones? Wow, I better watch Westworld. I've never seen either, so I couldn't tell you. So, I, I mean, yeah, I'm willing to admit it. Absolutely. I have no qualms about admitting it because I've never seen either. Uh, Doom 2814, I actually own Death Note. There are a few manga mangoes in my collection. I have Tomi and Shiver by Junji Ito and Bat Manga and Death Note. And I bet I get to them and read them. Oh, that's oh. great. And that Akira box set on my floor that's gathering <laughs> dust. <laughs> so big. Death Note is fantastic. Well, I think we answered everyone's questions about life. I thought for sure there was going to be questions on how to make a bunch of money, how to save money on your taxes, how to get beautiful women to fall in love with you. These are all things that Jess could answer for you guys. I don't know a thing you, about taxes. You, The beautiful girl thing? 
I did know about that 40 years ago. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I don't know a thing about taxes. I know how to dodge them, but I don't know how to do them. <laughs> oh, that was a good, good rapid fire q and I was a big fan of that. That was fun. Thanks for participating. Chat, it was a great time. This was good. I'm glad you got to do it for so long. Me too. I, I didn't think I was going to be able to go for that long. But, you know, sometimes you just don't expect to be able to go for that long. And then here you are, and you realize it was a great time. Everybody seems to have had a good good fun, and uh, everyone's leaving satisfied, and it's over. It's great. Right on, man. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for letting me be on. I'm going to go. Thank you for being on. As soon as my daughter wakes up, Going to take her to get some snow cones because it's super hot in Mississippi. It is super hot here, too. Ugh. Lots of fun. Thank A big shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank Good you. Lively. Yeah, we got a lot of people here for just a spur of the moment random Saturday show. Thank you, everybody, for participating in this chat. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Um, please. Um, just have fun with this uh, Saturday, what's left of it. And um, you can find me on Omnidogs Vault on YouTube and Omnidogs underscore Vault on uh, Instagram. I should post my latest haul on Instagram. I got a good haul. This was supposed to be on Jess's channel. I mean, I'm assuming everybody here is subscribed to Jess's channel. Oh, yeah, but shame um, if they were. We're having real problems with Google Hangouts. I cannot get it to work on my channel. And for some reason, Omnibros, it, it's happening okay. It's uh, censorship. I mean, they just really are trying to take down the man who's speaking against the system and is preaching to the people. They don't want you there, Jess. They need you there. And that's what's important. Okay. Josh. And I get an amen. <laughs> Let me preach to you. How does your daughter sleep through all that? Oh, she's downstairs in her bedroom, sound asleep. <laughs> yeah, we're having a real problem with Google Hangouts uh, for our, my individual channel. But for some reason, the Omni Bros network works, so we we brought it over here, and, and the Omni Bros were nice enough to let me uh, pirate the channel. But I got to get that figured out because I got a lot of things to do on my channel. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, peace and love, peace and love. Thank you, Tyler, for being on the show. You're welcome. It was fun. I tried to do. Uh, I don't know. What mic. were you trying to do there? I spell blood with my fingers. Did you ever see people someone do that? What? Yeah, you never seen that? Look, check it out. It's gonna be backwards, I guess. Oh, I see that. Yeah, yeah. It's Is that a gang thing? Yeah, I learned it in the second grade. Like, <laughs> like you, real oh, rough yeah. down here in Mississippi. Wow. It's crazy. Holy the suburb, smoke. hot Mississippi. Holy smoke. Blood. Well, uh, okay, extra peace and love for that. Peace and love. Peace and love. Thank you, chat. Thank you, audience. Uh, Everybody that participated and watched, thank you very much.